Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you an Expedition Match stream. Now we're going to start out with the game between Art Shaman and Exploit on Ravaged. Let's get right to it. Actually, before I get right to it, going to have one last reminder that there is a 1v1 tournament for Zero K on Saturday. We have a monthly tournament. Usually the last week of the month, last Saturday of the month, is at 9 a.m. UTC. So convert that to your respective time. Like, 2 a.m. PDT, I think it's like, well, it's 9 a.m. in Britain, or 9 or 10 a.m. in Britain, 11 or so in Germany. Australia, I think it's somewhere around like 7 in the evening. Anyway, when, so yeah, sign up on the forums for that, and then I'll probably be casting the game on Saturday, because I will be casting it, starting with whatever games I get to cast. I mean, I'm only going to guarantee casting semifinals, finals, and bronze match. But I will try to catch as many quarterfinals games and before then as well as I can. Probably will end up being about three or four of those, though. In practice, that's how it works out. Anyway, on to the game. Without further ado, we have Exploit in the northeast corner of the map going for Kaluki Bots, while Art Shaman goes for Light Vehicles, and Ravage is a map where pretty much every factory works. And just the way the map is designed, it's got enough choke points that bots can work fairly well. It doesn't really have as much in the way of terrain that impedes vehicles, though, so vehicles do fine. But yeah, bots don't have to worry about getting surrounded too much or the vehicle speed to making it too big of an advantage. And of course, spiders and jumpies just love the cliffs, so that works out very nicely for them. And... Air and gunship, well, it's rather far start locations, and it's pretty easy to defend this one ramp, so air and... Gunship starts actually work out pretty well here, too. Pretty much everything works. Even theoretically C, although admittedly that's kind of considered an exploit, but you could put it in the water here and then have it go around the side and up and then attack your opponent's base from down here. I've seen it happen, I think, once. Maybe. But yeah, it's theoretically doable. Anyway, Art Shaman is going for a very quick slasher start. And as is the case... Pretty typical for that. Actually, no, not typical. He's going quite forward for this. Normally, the Slasher Star is basically trying to avoid having to build defenders. You build Slashers instead, because they move. But Arshaman is being unusually aggressive with them. Exploit, on the other hand, going for a standard Glaive opening. Like, two Glaives into Conjurer. Actually, no, three Glaives into Conjurer. One of the Glaives already in the base, actually weaving around the Slashers quite nicely. Getting into the base, there is a defender being built up, but the Mason building up is going down pretty quickly. And that is... That is not going to last too long, though. A slasher in the way rather puts a stop to that. Well, Exploit is still actually dealing quite a bit of damage, though. Archaman is losing... Oh, losing a dart. Not much else, though. And if that Glaive went around... Ah, the Glaive went around the slasher could have hit the Mason, but no, it did not. Instead, hit the slasher... Sorry, the Scorcher. But actually dealt a decent, decent amount of damage to the Scorcher. However, the slashers are right on Exploit's base, meaning Exploit has a very hard time getting out of here is building up warriors, which won't help a great deal. The glaives are a really good idea. The warriors will help somewhat. I mean, the one advantage with warriors against slashers compared to the warrior against Rocco is that slashers can't fire and move, but slashers can outpace warriors. So we still have the same problem with general riot skirmisher, which is that skirmishers just outrange them and usually outpace them. Like, outpace the riots and outrange the riots. Like, that's the typical counter triangle in 0k, is that raiders beat skirmishers, beat riots, sorry, Raiders beat skirmishers. Yeah, beat riots, beat raiders. That's what it is. That is your typical counter set. And... Art Shaman moving in for what looks to be a possible kill. And like I said, hitting the warrior pretty hard. However, the warrior has enough health that will be able to catch up to the slasher and start dealing with it, actually. Yep. Pushing the slasher out of the way. In fact, killing that one slasher. The second slasher, however, able to get to that conjurer... Deal with it very quickly, and the Scorchers coming to get rid of the Warrior will not do much good at all because Scorchers are Raiders, and like I said, Raiders are basically countered by Riots, of which the Warrior is one. However, Exploit coming in with Rockos to try to continue countering this, but Art Shaman already switching over to Dominatrix. Art Shaman is being absolutely mean here in this switch to Dominatrix. That is... That is not something you do if you're trying to be nice. That... Dominatrix can be very annoying to deal with. I'd, however, Rockos are not a bad choice. I mean, basically, Exploit's already built the counter with the Rockos. Sharpshooter would be a better counter, yes, but 
Rockos do a good job as well. Both because they have the range and because if they do get captured, they're quite cheap units. Losing one isn't a big deal. However, the warrior is most likely the one to be lost, and this is even better for Exploit, because Exploit has the counter to it. Warriors are basically countered by Rockos, so Exploit can already deal with this while the Dominatrix is on its reload time. Actually, Dominatrix, just for reference, does have slightly less range than Rockos, but they're basically equal in range. However, this basically means the Rocco has the advantage because the Rocco's weapon moves without it. However, one of the Rockos has been lost, but the Dominatrix, unfortunately, not getting hit by enough Rockos. Exploit had not built quite enough of them in time, having focused instead on building Athena for some unknown reason. Regardless, reclaiming the Athena, ultimately not going for it, but using that money to fund the Cloakabot Factory fund all the Rockos. And at this point, we do have a Glaven here in our Shaman's base, getting rid of a couple of wind generators. Actually, getting rid of the entire energy economy. Nothing our Shaman has will counter this right now, except for the commander, which is certainly doing his job. We'll be able to go to the Glaive, but that is a decent blow to our Shaman's economy. Not a huge blow, though. Our Shaman has most of the southwest, south and west side of the map. Ultimately, not a bad raid, but still not that useful. However, the fact that Dominatrix was used here against all these Rockos, that really won't work out too well. I mean, ultimately, the Dominatrix is just not going to be able to have enough firepower and captured units. Not against Cloakies. And even with the Slashers coming in, I mean, the Rockos will do well there, but then again, we're just about to get the Warrior back. Yep, there we go, the Warrior is back for exploit. It's hurt, it needs to be repaired, but it is back. We have Glaives, well, mostly Glaives and Rockos with some Zeus coming in as well. Now, the Zeus is a juicy target. If the Dominatrix comes up, then that will be a big deal. Zeus being hit by the Dominatrix would be very difficult to deal with comparatively. I mean, Rockos and Glaze are fine, but Zeus, that can be dealt with, but it would be at some cost. However, there's only one more Dominatrix left, and that Zeus has not been built. It'll catch a Glaive. That'll be about it. And yeah, there it goes. Catches a Glaive. Glaive goes down. Actually, Dominatrix goes down first. The Glaive doesn't even go down. Ultimately, Exploit doesn't even lose that unit. Just kills the Dominatrix basically for free. Well, losing a Glaive of his own other than the one that was captured. But still, Exploit going in for what well, looks like definitive counterattack. Finds one of the... Finds one of the expansions. That doesn't really do it much good, though. They are not being helped out too much. The Scorchers are being a bit of a pain. But even the Warrior is up front. Is able to take care of them somewhat. However, is weakened and won't last too much longer. Yeah, Exploit is pushing back pretty hard, expanding at the same time to make sure that they have a continued push and the economic advantage. Because right now, Exploit does have a minor economic advantage and certainly has a positional advantage. However, the levelers coming in switch up from Archam and Leveler or Scorcher will help push this away. Though even then, the Rockers, once again, are the counter. So, ultimately, Exploit does have a good counter set here, and the Warrior as well doing his job. Getting rid of another Mason as well. Our Shaman is being pushed very far back into their base. Exploit, I think, is building far too many Glaives, though. Or rather, he's, they're not using the Glaives to raid out all these undefended metal extractors. Our Shaman's commander is taking some damage, but unfortunately not enough. And now with all these Glaives here, there's not much that's really doable. Our Shaman's commander is taking a decent amount of damage, but the Glaives just don't last long enough for it to matter. Exploit coming in with another wave, but entirely composed of Glaives this time, which means... Arch Shaman can just counter it with Scorchers and Levelers, and that'll be it. And the Commander as well. The Commander, however, does have a Heat Ray, so basically just another Scorcher, but much tougher. But yeah, those Glaives don't really have much more going for them. The Rockos were a great choice, but unfortunately it's going to be another 35 Glaives where the Rockos are built. I don't know why... Honestly, I have no idea why Exploit is building so many Glaives. Why he's building in this... Why they're building in this order. I get they don't want to build too many Zeuses, but... Like, you don't want to have, if you want to try to make a mixed army, you make, you mix the cube. Like you do a couple glaze and a Rocco. Or like three glaze, one Rocco, and they'll just infinite loop. Having this sort of cube kind of makes sense when you consider the rarity of the Zeus's and of the Conjurers. But otherwise, it doesn't really work out. And honestly, it's going to lose exploit the game. He had the win. And without, sorry, they had the win. And without those Roccos, there's not going to be much more to be done. Without those Rockos, it's basically game. Because our Shaman can easily get the counter up. I mean, the Scorchers are enough, and... Even then, though, actually, Exploit is starting to just get 
by sheer numbers ahead somewhat. Archimus Commander taking a decent amount of damage, but not going to go down anytime soon. And like I said, no Rockos, no Warriors, nothing to really push that. There's nothing to push the advantage. Their Glaives can only do so much. They cannot attack that hard. Enough Glaives will, but Glaives are streaming in single file, which... Uh, exploit, you had this game. You still kind of do. You haven't lost it yet, but... It's not a good sign right now. It, it's really not in a good position. Exploit just streaming in these units. I'm pretty sure that this factory... Yeah, this factory has a fight order straight into Archhammer's base, causing all the Glaives to walk in single file. That is a big mistake. There should be, instead of move order or fight order, to about here, given the ter territory controlled, or here otherwise. And that, from there, would let there be a group of Glaives, which would allow the group of Glaives to actually deal with Archhammer's commander, which is now fully healed at 4200 health. Rockos would be perfect here. And Exploit's commander about to go down, too. Exploit, no choice but lose their commander. <sighs> Commander's down. Glaives finally are being done, being built. And actually, they weren't even on infinite build. The infinite build's on, but they were not infinitely queued. And now 18 Rockos, but honestly, Exploit just now grouping up their units. Still, they donated a lot of metal to Archshaman. Huge amount of metal. Archshaman using it to just morph their commander up to level 3. This should not happen. Like, this should not be allowed to happen. But it is, because Exploit did not have... He only has... They only have Glaives. It, masses of Glaives do not work this late in the game when your opponent has a level 3 commander, has... Well, okay, that's really the only thing that Archhaman has, honestly. That commander goes down, and Archhaman basically has nothing, but that commander's not going down anytime soon. Double Heat Ray with Auto Repair System and quite a few health buffs. And, of course, the water. Just jump into the water to heal up. You know, not a bad Lotus here for Exploit in the south northwest side of the map, but Exploit just does not have the units to deal with this. Honestly, Air Switch into four or five Ravens would do it along with switching over to Warrior Rocco. That would win the game. That would give Exploit the game right now. Because the one thing that Archimon does not have is a lot of units. Archimon has been spending a lot in Morph, continues to spend a lot in Morph, and the units are not being built up as quickly as they could be. I mean, the, this here, that's five metal, and the factory itself is pushing in about six. So basically, the caretaker might as well not exist. The factory has 10 metal per second. Most of the metal... Okay, when the commander isn't morphing. Yeah, that commander morph, that is the only thing Archhaman has going for them. And it's actually doing pretty well. Enough Rockos are up, I think, to actually start dealing with it. But even then, no, not enough Rockos. The auto heal is too fast. If it was level 1 or 2, it should, it'll be fine. But level 4, no. This is where you need Ravens. You very much need Ravens. And this is also where you need Warriors with all these Scorchers here. Just, I don't know. Exploit is not building up a nice mix of units. They're building up... Far too many single type units, far too many... Oh, not, you know, the army is far too much one type of unit. It just... Glaive with some Rocco, no warriors, no sharpshooters, no racers, no ravens, no switch off to air for ravens, no size for a sneaky factory kill, which actually would be doable right now. There's no static defense in the main base. Because of that slash to start, Archhaman has not yet gone for static defense in the main base, and Exploit knows it. I should point that out. Exploit knows this. Exploit has seen Archimon's main base, knows that there's no static defense there. So, four or five sizes to get rid of the factory would actually get rid of the factory. Okay, these Scorchers might get in the way, but other than the Scorchers, they would kill the factory. And that would basically do Archhaman in. But no, Exploit is just sticking... I think Exploit's brain has frozen. I think Exploit has... His brain, or their brain, I think, is locked at this point. They're stuck in this thinking of, no, I have I have this, I have to do this, I have to do this, this is what I do. I have Rockos and I have Glaives. And I know that feeling and I hate that feeling and is one of the hardest feelings to have in the game. I think that's what's happening because it really looks like Exploit is just trying to execute a strategy that they probably realize is not working very well but don't know what to do instead. The answer in this case is Ravens and to a lesser extent Scythes. However, the Glaives also doing some harassment and Exploit is making sure to build up along the side. But even then, the Glaives are not doing enough. And the Rockos aren't doing enough. They aren't dealing enough damage in a short pe enough period of time. This is where Ravens would come in. And Warriors would also help out, actually. Warriors wouldn't be the best option, but they would work out pretty well in this situation. So, ultimately, Archaman gonna win by Trollcom. Now just plowing into the base, and is going to win by Trollcom against Composition Failure. Fortunately, Exploit did not have the right unit composition, and Archaman 
just able to push through with a strong enough commander, basically. That, that's all it is, it's just, it, it's Dota win. It's, the commander wins. And yeah, in case you're wondering, if you haven't, if you aren't aware, if you aren't someone who's played 0k at all, there is actually a mod for 0k that basically implements Dota. It's called 0k Dota, very imaginative, I know. But, it is... I haven't actually played it much myself, I want to do a showcase on it at some point, never got a chance, might be able to do it at some point, but... Yeah, this is what, it, what I call a Dota win, because the commander does all the work. And the commander's done all the work, and actually has succeeded at doing so, exploit now lost the game, lost their factory, actually, lost a factory. Not lost all of them, they have a late vehicle factory over in the northwest side of the map, but air is the only real choice. Air into Ravens to get rid of the commander, that's the only thing that would really do the trick. Because right now, we're looking at half a dozen auto repair systems. Just, that's it. Exploit's argument's invalid. Six auto repair systems on this commander. Or not just argument, more so units. Their units are invalid. It would take about eight, no, seven, seven ravens, possibly eight just in case for timing, but seven if they all hit at once to kill this. That's 2100 metal. I think exploit could do that. It would take about a minute and a half, but it's doable. Actually, it would take about two and a half minutes to build a factory in the first place. But that's not going to happen. In fact, our shaman has taken advantage of the situation and started building wolverines as well. Oh yeah, she went on cloaking field too. Yeah, just, just, yeah. I mean, exploit trying to build this light vehicle factory. Possibly not aware of what's going on, but I think, I think he's got to be. Yeah, he's he's got to be aware of what's going on. There's just too much. There's just too much coming in here. Too much that's cut through. And yeah, there we go. Art Shaman has one exploit thrown in the towel, and I will be back with. Another game, but maybe. Just give me a sec. So I'll be back with another game. It might be zero K. I don't mean to bait and switch, but I was actually trying to do something else that didn't. That timing got messy on. Stay tuned. It might be zero K. It might not but it will be something.